Bless up, bless up, bless all the way up. It's your boy Change Agent Cooper, and I need you to like this channel, subscribe to this channel, and click the bell for notifications because I got some content to get out to you. I got a lot to say, and I'm going to say it. I got a lot of experience, strength, and hope, and I'm going to share it. For me not to, it would be blasphemy. So this morning, the topic is opportunity youth. So what is an opportunity youth, you may ask? So an opportunity youth is a person who is 16 to 24 years old who is not working or going to school. This is what we call opportunity youth. 16 to 24, not working or going to school. And so the reason why this, this has been on my radar even heavier within the past, I'd say about nine months is, you know, um, shout out to, you know, Sarah Langer Hall and Henson State University's Institute for Emerging Issues. You know, I was recruited to be the practitioner in residence and in recruiting folks for the uh, Talent First Economics Task Force. Um, I got to meet a lot of solid people and some of them work with Opportunity Youth. You dig? From all over the state. Such, such a blessed experience I'm getting with this work with Institute for Emerging Issues. Wow. But while on the topic of Opportunity Youth, you know, um, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't didn't share that you know a lot of times in my career in workforce development i've got pulled on to serve opportunity youth from the community from the community um typically this has happened because of the lack of cultural culturally sensitive culturally responsive services in western north carolina so when I say that, I want to make sure I break down these SAT words because you can hear me say culturally sensitive or culturally responsive, and you'd be like, oh, that sounded fancy, but what the hell do they mean? So when I say culturally sensitive, that means you're sensitive to the effect that culture has on the individual. You, you dig what I'm saying? And then culturally responsive, for, it means that you're responding in a way to where this culture can grasp it. And you have an understanding of the impacts of the culture on the individual. You know what I'm saying? Hence, talent first economics. That's when we put the people first. Are you seen in my email, signature line, or or maybe on a hashtag, power to the people strategy, right? Person first. And so when I'm thinking about opportunity youth and, and I'm thinking about the lack of culturally sensitive, culturally responsive services um, in my region, um, um, I, I have to say I'm grateful and blessed because the Chamber of Commerce was awarded, you know, uh, Accelerate Buncom. 40% of what we asked for was awarded. 40% of it, you know, and we're, we're grateful that we're going to be able to help folks and we're going to have, we're going to be intentional about serving marginalized communities. That's what Accelerate Buncom is all about, you know. Um, and so this morning, while driving to uh, go pick a young man up that I'm taking the treatment this morning, yup, 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 love what I get to do, voices of Afrolatia, let's go. Um, um, while on the road to pick this young man up, I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is an opportunity youth. By definition, 16 to 24 years old, not working or going to school. And and also, just thinking about, like, for y'all who watching this video, like, well, who are the opportunity youth that you know of, 16 to 24, that's not working or going to school? And, you know, that's a recipe for trouble, especially in that age. You got to be working on something. You got to be working. You got to be working on the trade, maybe at the community's college, you know what I'm saying, getting a trade or a certification or something, you know, because I'm telling you, they say the, uh, the out of mind is the devil's playground. And so I got personal experience with that too. And that's why y'all hear me hollering lived experience matters, lived experience matters, lived expertise. You know, um, for y'all folks that don't have lived experience, don't feel threatened. Don't feel threatened because when I'm trying to raise this army of folks up with lived experience, I'm not trying to take your job. I'm not trying to replace you. I mean, whatever position you may be in systemically is probably where you need to be anyway because we need to have allies within the system as well. But those allies uh, uh, just got to keep it keep it 100 and stay solid. And that I, we need y'all allies to also be advocating for lived experience, being an uh, expertise. And when I was in uh, Bethesda, Maryland, at the uh, reentry workforce uh, conference, um, you know it was people there that didn't have lived experience, and they was championing lived experience, like bigging it up. As a matter of fact, a lady that didn't have lived experience that was that was uh, doing a session called she called it lived expertise, and that's where I got the lingo from. 
You dig? I got that lingo from uh, the lady who who was at, uh, you know doing a session with no lived experience. She called it lived expertise. She saw, told the the people in that session that they needed to be sure to 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 uh, uh, invest in lived experience. So so I'm just throwing it out there. Y'all don't feel threatened. Don't feel threatened. Well, like that's not it. We trying to improve access. You know what I'm saying? And that's the social determinant of health. I know a lot of people like to talk about social determinants of health, and they use that vernacular loosely these days because it's sexy language. You dig what I'm saying? But many of us, many of us folks, we was already working on the social determinants, those social drivers that impact the health of our people. We was already working on that. We just didn't use the lingo. So when we think of social determinants of health, when we think of you know opportunity youth, we know economic security is a determinant of health. We also know that you know uh, uh, um, what's the other one that I was want uh, access to quality quality education you know what I'm saying and we have to continue to understand you know education and training go hand in hand you dig what I'm saying so when we look at those social drivers like that and how it impacts the opportunity you if they ain't got no economic security and they don't have quality access to to, to education and training then guess what they going they going to get them some economic security somehow some way and, and for the people that look like me, especially young black men, what I've seen was a lot of them go trying to mess around with that dope game. And that dope game ain't it. And so I'm here now, y'all. I'm telling you, I'm here for the next year. I know at least for the next year I got this position secured. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the county, uh, Bun uh, Bunker County, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act dollars for making sure I got a salary to do this work. Because Lord knows I've done this work voluntarily, voluntarily while I was working in other positions and I couldn't have as great as an impact because I was in them other positions. You did what I'm saying? But now, you know, uh, it's not a hundred, it's not a substance use program that I'm managing no more. It's not even a hundred percent reentry. This is about closing the opportunity gap. So I'm rocking with Astros, uh, Astros City Schools Career Technical Education already on their advisory board, on the North Carolina Workforce Credentials Advisory Board. You dig what I'm saying? So I'm here, y'all, and I'm bridging the gap. I got about 18 people on my caseload already, and I've only been in this position since November the, uh, the 7th. Yeah, that part. So it's going down. It's going down. And, 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 and I want to do this video about Opportunity Youth and, and, and in closing. I want to let y'all know, like, if you know somebody is 16 and 24 and they're not working or going to school, hit me up, man. I want to have a conversation with them, you know, face to face because we got resources now. It ain't a game. It is not a game, y'all. Big facts. Big facts. And, and I'm going to say this in close. I was an opportunity youth and I was getting in all kind of trouble, you know, and I'm going to salute my parents because my parents did the best they could. You know, and my dad, he, he, he tried to stay on me. And, 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 and pump that wisdom into me. But, it, you know, poor decision making. I was impacted by my peers. You know what I'm saying? And I had chosen a way of life. Um, and I was committed to it. You did. And when I went to prison, I went to prison as an opportunity youth. I went to prison at 23, y'all. I was 23 years old when I went to prison. And I was not working. And I was not going to school. But I was selling dope. You hear me? I was selling dope. I was riding around in rental cars. Had two hotel rooms. You know what I'm saying? Geek, geeked out of my mind on the drugs, using more and more drugs because I had to shut my conscience up. And I was having them convictions in my conscience because I had a lot of people praying for me. Y'all know I come from a praying family. So I was having them convictions, so I had to stay high to keep living that lifestyle. You feel me? I was an opportunity youth, up to no good. But now there is something available to engage community and bridge the gaps to the resources. So if you know somebody who is an opportunity youth, maybe it's maybe it's you, maybe it's somebody in your family, you know what I'm saying? That's an opportunity youth, 16 to 24 that's not working or going to school. Holla at your boy, man. I want to get them, I want to get them on my calendar, man. Let's talk about workforce development. Let's talk about short-term job trainers. Let's talk about paid trainers. Let's talk about different sectors. Let's talk about hospitality. Let's talk about uh, 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 advanced manufacturing, which is my favorite. Let's talk about healthcare. Let's talk about getting into jobs where you can go in and then they do tuition reimbursement. Let's talk about budgeting. You know what I'm saying? We let, Let's talk about real life, yo. Let's talk about real life. It's time. It's been time. And I'm here now, y'all. Facts. Facts. And and, 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 and and there's more of us coming. I got to be careful because the press release ain't came out yet. So I don't want to spoil the press release. But I want y'all to know that Change Agent Cooper 
is employed as of right now as the workforce equity advocate and you already know I'm committed to whatever work I do and you already know if I say I'm gonna close the opportunity gap, somebody gonna reap the benefits from it. You dig what I'm saying? Ready to rock and roll. My name is Change Agent Cooper. I'm not the answer, but I'm for damn sure the alternative.